Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back. Welcome back again to the Lester Prosper Show. You know, we have one of the most influential, one of the most realist, you know what I'm saying? Realist trainers, realist basketball players, realist people here that I've known for years. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to introduce him now. He's 13-year pro. Um, now he's training some of the top athletes in the world. And um, you know what I'm saying? We're just here to have a conversation and, and inspire. So my boy, Ronnie, what's up, baby? My oh, man, how you doing, man? Man, I'm good, I'm good. Well, thank you for driving all the way up here, first of all. Hey, man. You know what I mean? I know, I know it's like, what, two hours away? It was a little hump, man. You know, you got a few curse words on my way up here, but you know, I had to come see my boy, for sure. I, I appreciate that, I yeah, appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. So, so tell me, tell me, tell me. We're gonna jump right into it. What is your, um, your coaching philosophy and approach to developing players? Uh, well, for me, you know, I like to kind of break down the work, you know, kind of see, you know, what guys do, what they don't do so well, um, you know, especially at the, at the level in, in which I work with some of the guys, you know, it's not too much that you're teaching, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's more so polishing a lot of things mm -hmm. and finding, you know, points of uh, improvement and working on that. Um, for me, it's, it's a lot of mental, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, talking them through it with me being a prior, well, a previous professional myself, you know, I kind of understand where the guys are going through. Obviously, I didn't make it to the highest level with the NBA, but, you know, from one hooper to another, you know, I can kind of coexist and understand. But it's still know. a grind. Correct. You took Correct. the stairs. So no, you, sure. can't even, you can't even say that you didn't make it at the highest level because there's a lot of things that – players like you deal with, especially being a point guard, you right. know what I'm saying? And I'm a big, right. so especially being a point guard, it's, you know, there's a lot of point guards. Correct. So I respect your grind, brother. I appreciate it. Yeah. You know, for me, like I said, I've always been like a hooper's hooper. You know, even when I get out there and I work with guys today, like it, it's coming from a place, you know, of, of, of a hooper, you know? Of course. Um, everything I do is genuine, you know? I go above and beyond for my guys because for me, selfishly, you know, since I left the game, you know, just seeing the guys go be successful, like that's me having a little part of their journey, which as the inner, and, and the inner hooper in me, you mm -hmm. know, makes me happy. It keeps me going, keeps me motivated, you know. So so who, who, who was your first client? One of my first clients, uh, well, one of my first NBA clients was um, Tyreek Evans. But who was your first, first client? My first, first client, um, my first first client I had a group of guys. So what I did, funny, I'll give you a little backstory. Um, even how I even got going. Um, my last year in Europe, you know, I used to have a group a group chat with probably like maybe 10, 12 guys and, you know, playing in various countries, uh, Breon Rush, Damon Mallet, Pat Beverly before he even got to the mm -hmm, league, mm -hmm. uh, William Hatcher, Ahaji Muhammad, just to name a few, mm -hmm. uh, J.R. Brimmer. I know, I know Aji. He's yeah. a really good guy. Derek Byers, you mm -hmm. know, we were all just in there and really it just became a brotherhood, you mm -hmm. know, where like, you know, we were playing against each other, you know, and we were going through different things, you know, at different points of our state, uh, of our career and everything. We would just lean on each other and stuff like that. So w w what were you going through in your career? Was it emotional, mental? I mean, just, just getting over the hump. You know, a lot of people don't really understand the grind that it takes to go be a professional athlete, especially in a different country, mm -hmm. you know, like, Different. It's a language barrier, you know, the culture is different, you know, the things that they're accustomed to versus what we're accustomed to. There's a lot of differences and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. For me, I didn't really struggle too much just because I was just a kid that just loved the hoop and I always mm -hmm. kept an open mind. So I was able to kind of fit into any environment that I was in. But mm -hmm. even with like, you know, uh, other players and stuff, whether they were giving me advice or I was giving them advice or shit, just to pass the time to talk, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, being a professional athlete in a different country, you miss out on a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. birthdays, graduations, barbecues. And that affected you a lot emotionally? Yeah, I mean, of course, you see your friends back home and stuff like that, and you want to be there, but you got to understand the grind and the sacrifice, you know, for you to get to that next level. And so, so talking about the next level, have you, have you ever, like, um, you know, reached out to your agent, um, different contacts, um, some of your friends that were in the league that, you know, at the time, did you ever reach out to them to ask them for like help and be like, hey man, can you try to get me a workout here or there? Even if, you're, even um, if your agent's not working like that you, also. You know, that's one of the things that I probably, I don't really regret too many things, mm -hmm. but that's probably one thing that I, I wish I would have probably pushed a little bit harder at. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, I got overseas 
I mean, I was hungry. I didn't have any like responsibilities in terms mm-hmm. of finances and stuff. Mm-hmm. I had no kids. I had a cell phone bill. Mm-hmm. So all I needed to do was just go over there and just play. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't really have like the money didn't determine where or if I could take a job or not. Um, mm-hmm. And once I got comfortable, like I just kept my foot on the gas. So and did you have really the business? Back. Did you have the business philosophy in mind? Um, like yes. I know that you only had a cell phone bill, but did you did you see yourself um, like knowing where you want to go? Um, yes and no. Um, mm-hmm. Coming out of college, I had dealt with a couple of injuries. I broke my leg in college and stuff. So coming out, you know, I made a promise to myself prior to graduating. I have fell behind a little bit. Like one people, one thing people don't realize is basketball is a privilege, mm-hmm. you know, and Absolutely. coming into college, you know, I was looking at it, I was smelling myself, you know, I was playing well, you know, agents already started hitting me up and everything like that. And boom, break my leg. So then after that, you know. How long of a setback that was? Shit, I was out like eight months, bro. You know, and, and how was that emotionally and mentally for you? It was tough. I mean, initially, you know, I was a little bit down, but I mean, through the graces of God and just like my up, upbringing and my mom and dad, you know, I was able to refocus and stuff and, and not let it hold me back and really just kind of look at the situation I was in. Uh, one thing about me, uh, any situation I've ever been in, I always found something good in it, you know, so even though it's hard to sit here and talk so, about. So, so what did you find good in that situation, at, you know, when you broke your leg? Because I'm, I'm thinking about this mentally and I'm right. like. You know, so for me, like sometimes I play mental tricks on myself mm-hmm. to help get me over the hump. So, like I said, it's hard to find something good out of breaking your leg. But for me, like I used to always hear people around me, you know, like my girlfriend in college at the time and just other regular students always complaining about, you know, having to pay for books and how much tuition was. So I looked at it like, look, you know, you going to school for free. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You got to smarten up. And so, like, I made a promise to myself I was going to catch all my grades up, you mm-hmm. know, graduate on time and commit my, my summer to really just put my, all my eggs in one basket in terms of wanting to be a pro, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, fortunately, it worked out. Shout out to my, my, my trainer, um, Keith Gatlin. He got me right. Um, shout out to my mentor, Kevin Graves. He was always big for me, pushed me forward, always kept me level-headed and... and, and and humble, you know, and, and just keep my eyes on the prize and stuff like that. You know, like I had, I graduated, I got my degree in business administration, I had a concentration in marketing. So if the basketball didn't work out, you know, I was looking to pursue a, a career in pharmaceutical sales and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, from a business standpoint, did I go into it knowing that this is what I it was think, going I to think be? You went in, I, I think you went into business. I, I, I think I did, but not really understanding that that's what I was doing. Mm-hmm. You know, I was just following with my heart and my passion. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, for me, once I got overseas, like I always, I was always cautious of, you know, how I moved. You know, I never would want to lose a job or mm-hmm. have anything mm-hmm. like hurt my, my reputation or mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. over something that I could control. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, just, I, you know, like I said, I credit my mother and my father and like my upbringing a mm-hmm. lot because a lot of things like that I did, I didn't know that I was doing, but I look back and I'm like, okay. No, nah, you, you have a lot of self-control because like, Couple of the runs, you know what I'm saying? Every time you join the runs and I'm I'm like dogging you out. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you keep yeah. yourself. <laughs> you, <laughs> you got to, man. You know the thing is, is for me as an athlete, bro. I'm just like, kidding with you, man. <laughs> nah, you know me, bro. You know. For me, like uh I always I, I never get too high, I never get too low. Yeah. Um I've had a, a ton of wins in my life and, and I didn't let it go to my head. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, even with my losses, I didn't let it go to, you know, hurt my heart or anything like that. Even with me getting started. Like, my last year before retiring from basketball, I mean, you know, we played in the gym. I probably could have played another two, three years if I wanted to. But uh, I decided to to step away from the game because it was important that I left the game under, like, my own will. Like, I didn't want to leave the game because I got hurt or I didn't get the deal that I wanted. So then I started, you know, putting a plan into motion. Mm -hmm. You know, I was off social media for probably about six months just because it was just – it was anti-productive for me. You know, I would Mm -hmm. be on there scrolling for hours, looking at the girls and all that Mm -hmm. type of stuff. And, you know, it wasn't really doing nothing for me. Mm -hmm. So when I got back on there, I told myself I was gonna clean up my page. You know, I was gonna get rid of all the girls I was following just because I wanted to be respected for what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I started to like DM, I told myself I would DM 20 players a night, whether I knew you or not. Mm -hmm. I understood I was gonna get a lot more no's than I got yeses. So not to cut you off. Mm -hmm when you're while you're DMing 20 players like how how many players responded to you 
Uh, some players responded. Some players like, bro, I know you. What are you doing? But it wasn't about them knowing me. I needed them to understand who I was becoming. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was important for me. Mm -hmm. You know, and so kind of to get back to your first question of who was my first client, I did like a little mini camp, if you want to call mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. um, and all of those people that was in that group text with me, they all came and fuck with mm -hmm. me, bro. Like, they all came down. Like, it wasn't like, oh, I'm not paying this or that. They was like, bro, like, this is what you're doing. Like, mm -hmm. we're going to support you. So shout out to that group text. We still got it. Mm -hmm. um, they my brothers. Like, I, I definitely wouldn't be here without them. Mm -hmm. You know, they all came through, you know, supported me tenfold. Um, so for me, like those were my first clients. So I, I, I can't really say I had one in particular, you mm -hmm. know. Are they, uh, is half of them from North Carolina? Nah, bro, that's the thing, bro. Like a lot of them I met on my journey through basketball and stuff mm -hmm. like that and we just became family, you mm -hmm. know. So like some guys are from Atlanta, some guys are from Chicago, you know, various places and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. we all had that one thing in common, basketball. And so you grew up in Tobacco Row? Right? Yeah, yeah. Tell us yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah. Tell, from tell North us Carolina, about that. man. Shout out <laughs> yeah, to North Carolina. Shout out to North Carolina. Carolina. <laughs> you know, we got the best basketball players out, just so y'all know. You know, I'm up for any debate anybody want to do. You know um, what? I'm not going to debate that, but. You know, <laughs> yeah, because... you know, so uh, I'm originally from Raleigh. Mm -hmm. um, well, let my guys from Raleigh tell you a little pocket outside of Raleigh, but. So from my neighborhood, the likes of John Wall, PJ mm -hmm. Tucker, TJ Warren, Devontae Graham. Mm -hmm. Um, the list goes on and on, you know, guys just came out of that area and stuff, you know, and then when you talk about North Carolina as a whole, like Bam Adebayo, Montrez Hurl, Brandon mm -hmm. Ingram, Hassan Whiteside, mm -hmm. you know, Trey Murphy, you know, the, the the names go on and on and on. Let me ask you a question, right? Tobacco Road's like in the middle of nowhere, right? I wouldn't say that. I mean, it's, it's RTP, you know, Research Triangle Park, so you got Raleigh, you got uh, mm -hmm. UNC, you got Duke. So Tobacco Road is really just the road between Carolina and Duke, you know. So, so, so how how did um, how did the light shine in North Carolina for basketball? Who who was the number one prospect in North Carolina basketball that all the schools, all the the um, NBA pro scouts and overseas pro scouts saying we need to look at this place? Um, I mean, listen, bro, like. My AAU team, we were loaded. Chris mm -hmm. Wilcox was on my team, Marcus Melvin, Michael Bell. Like, we had a loaded team. I mean, it's mm -hmm. always been hoopers from North Carolina if you go back and do your history. But mm -hmm. for me, the one person that I feel like put us on the map, um, and everybody prior to that did their thing, but was John Wall. Mm -hmm. Like, John Wall came through and he just. Yeah, he has sick high school he just, he just He just did something different for the, for the mm -hmm. city. Mm -hmm. You know, like, PJ Tucker kind of started paving the way, but. Mm -hmm. When John Wall came through, he was that guy. You know, PJ Tucker pick. went overseas also, right? Yeah, yeah. But John was, for me, you know, like I said, I'm a little older than John. So, like, just looking back and how he kind of put the whole state on his back, you know, like, mm -hmm. kid can play, you know what I mean? And then even when he, number one pick, he went to Kentucky, did his thing, number mm -hmm. one pick in the draft, went to Washington, turned that up, you know, so... For me, I think not, uh, John Wall is probably the staple for North so let me Carolina. Ask you, John John Early. Wall John Wall always been this naturally fast. Yeah, I remember seeing videos of him racing people that were in track and stuff like oh, that. You know, okay. like kid was so he never athlete. worked. He never worked out. On, he never worked on his like running. I, I, don't give me the line. I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. um, but the kid has just always been. John, super have, fast. have you worked on your running, John? Because <laughs> that dude is fast, man. Yeah, no. Even, even now. Right. You know, and how old is he now? 33? 32, 33, something like that. You know, dude, I mean? like you know, when we run a five on fives, I'm like, right. and then no, he, from, now he has muscle, right? So he throws his shoulder into you, and it's just like, all right, what am I gonna do? But this is a foul, right? Yeah. No, from from baseline to baseline, he's still pretty quick. Yeah, you know, so that's crazy, man. But no, I think you know, outside of the likes of like Michael Jordan and stuff like that, for me, people that I could kind of like identify with mm -hmm. and stuff like that, like John was one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up, man. You know who you remind me of, man? Your play style. Um, like Mike Bibby, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? Your play style is pretty pretty crazy, man. Like, when I first played against you, man, um, I was like, why are you not in the league? You're, I, you're, I remember I asked you that question. I asked yeah, you, I I'm like, dude, like, what are you doing? Right, right. You know, but, like, as I say, man, like, you have you have a goal. So, and and, I, and this was, like, six years ago. You know, and from going to Fast Twitch, from, you know, where else you were training? You, were, I met you in Fast Twitch. Yeah, yeah. I was in Fast Twitch. I used a YMCA. Like, for me, bro, I'm a hustler. 
Mm -hmm. You feel me? And when I say I'm a hustler, like I'm a hustler for hoops. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So anybody that want to get some work in, I'm going to figure it out. You know, like, because that was me. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was coming out, like I needed to hoop. I needed like people to help me and stuff like that. So for me, one thing that's always stuck with me that my cousin told me, uh, shout out to my cousin, Sean Harris. He always told me like, cuz we got to pay it for it. So like I've always lived with that mentality and stuff like that, you know, just to pay things for it. Like, you know me, bro. I'll help anybody that comes through the gym. It's not mm -hmm. always about like monetary or anything. Trust me, like I, that. I, like, I I definitely know that. Right. For a you know fact. For there's me, times like, there's times that I hit you up, and you're like, let's just come to the gym. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And that's when I I didn't even have nothing. Right, you know what I mean? Right. And that's why I was like, man, this is it's so rare to have somebody that you know what I mean is on top of their game right now because you are one of the best trainers in America right now, and and that's that's facts. You know, from watching, and it's something that I saw with the development of the players. This is not me just trying to be like, yo, you're the best. No, it's the development of the players, plus you're Hooper, you know right. what I'm saying? And then you came to Miami, you know, won four championships back to back. You know what I mean? Miami Pro League. Champ Tell us about that. Tell us uh, about that. I mean, you know. Which one was the hardest one? Was it the first one, the hardest one, or the or the last one? Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a guess. I'm gonna say this one only because, and I, I said this before. The reason why this one was the hardest because now everybody gunning for me, bro. Everybody yeah. trying to gun for me. Okay. You know what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> I remember in that championship game. You know, we were winning, we were playing well and stuff like that. But once they took the lead, I, th I remember looking at the crowd one time and I said, damn, everybody against me right now. But it's OK, OK, OK. You know, I felt like uh, <laughs> you ever seen uh, Denzel in Training Day mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when he was in the hood mm -hmm. and then everybody started turning against yep, him. And yep. he was like, I'll put bucks yep, on all yep, y'all. Yep. I felt like that for a second. I'm like, damn, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But I get it, you know, I've been winning a lot. So, you know, everybody want to see somebody else win. For me, you know, I'm a competitor, so mm -hmm. I'm going to always put my best foot forward. I'll tell you an interesting story that a lot of people probably don't know, though. Mm -hmm. It's on my way. I hadn't lost in three years, mm -hmm. and I lost twice this year in the regular season. Mm -hmm. So I, I remember calling Debo and Kyle, and I said, listen, anybody that beat me in the regular season, line me up to play them in the playoffs. So if you see in the playoffs, I had the sixth seed. Mm -hmm. Really, I was the third seed, but I'm like, no, if you beat me, mm -hmm. you got to show me that you beat me when I got my full team. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like That's just a competitor in me and stuff like that. Um, at the end of the day, though, it's a lot, a lot of deeper reasons why I do what I do. You know, being from North Carolina and stuff like that, from Raleigh, the closest NBA team we had was Charlotte, mm -hmm. you know, when they had the, the Hornets and then the Bobcats and back to the Hornets. Mm -hmm. So I say that to say this, I didn't really get a chance to interact or see my first NBA players into the summer league, you mm -hmm. know, uh, Jerry Stackhouse, Rasheed mm -hmm. Wallace, Shaman Williams, Ed Cole, guys like that. So, like, for me. Rasheed Wallace from Charlotte? No, but he went to Carolina, oh, okay. you know what I mean? So for me, it was just an opportunity to, to kind of give back what I learned because I was that kid in the stands watching these guys, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So in the pro am every chance I, I told myself when I had a chance and uh, influence with like the players and everything like that, like I was going to pay it forward and give it back because there's some kids in that stands that if, the, if they get a chance to go to the game, it's the nose bleeds, you know what I mean? Um, so for me at the Miami Pro, you know, kids can come, you know, I'm big on if you can, if you can see it, you can touch it, you can become it, you know, so to be able to see a Donovan Mitchell 10 feet away or mm -hmm. a Bam Adebayo and he dap you up as, mm -hmm. as he's going to the locker room, like, not to say that's me, but it is me in not terms sure. of like the influence to be able to have them there and, you know, my relationship with the players is all genuine, you know. Yeah, your, your relationship is authentic. You know, there's no, there's no fake stuff. Like, like for example, like when I, you know, I play overseas, right. you know, and every time you call me up and you're like, yo, Les, you know, come over, come hoop with these guys. And that right. prepares me for going back overseas. So when I go back overseas, it's like, oh, I just finished playing against Bam. I just finished playing against Whiteside. I just right. finished playing against, you know, um, Tim Hardaway Jr. You know, like, it prepares me for overseas. So like, I'm going over there like, well, dog, no right. disrespect to any players, but I just finished playing against John Wall. Right, you, right. You know what I mean? I'm going to I'm gonna guard you out here on this perimeter. Right. You know, so, you know what I mean? And and you run your stuff so 
like old school. You know what right. I mean? So like if you lose, yo, get off the court. Right. The next guy, next man up. And you know, I respect is, that. You know, the thing is with me, bro, I'm big on culture. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like the way that I was brought up, even when I was training, you know, shout out to Rico Hans. Like when I lived in L.A., mm -hmm. like I was working out with Rico. Rico, mm -hmm. a North Carolina guy too. Yeah. A lot of people probably don't even know that. Um, but like for me, I just brought I was brought up with some old school principles. Mm -hmm. So like I'm going to hold you accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that's kind of helped my relationships with the players because they feel like my passion and my dedication. Like everybody knows me, bro. Like, I'll go above and beyond for mm -hmm. you. Like once our energies connect and our passions for the game mm -hmm. like align, like bro, like it's nothing that I won't do for you. Because when you bro. walk in the UM and, and we run a five on five and you see, you know, some of these NBA players on the sideline, you're like, why are you on the sideline? Oh, they just lost. Yeah. So now you you on the court with a bunch of guys from overseas and and they going hard and if they win they stay on if they right. lose then you know they know they're gonna have to sit again but the the way you run that program man is, is letting dudes know that you got to work hard for everything and that helps them to go into life um, saying to themselves well if I lose this game I'm gonna go home this right. is overseas if I lose this game coach gonna put me on the bench this is right. you know what I'm saying so it's like. It's like, man, I respect how you, you run your stuff. You know what I'm saying? Oh, for sure, bro. Like, I'm big on iron sharpens iron. Like, I can't sit here and babysit nobody. Like, listen, I'm going to give it to you straight. I'm going I'm to hold you accordingly. You know, mm -hmm. one thing, like, as I was developing and, and learning, you know, my trade even more, like, I had to, like, catch myself because mm -hmm. it's a lot of times, like, I'll start working with a player and I'll see something in them mm -hmm. that they don't even see in themselves. Mm -hmm. And which is cool. But at the same time, when they don't see it in themselves, then they looking at me like, why are you pushing me so hard? You know, so mm -hmm. for me, like I had to start asking, the first question I, like, I ask pretty much every client I work with is what you want to get out of this? Mm -hmm. You know, so once I get that answer, now I know how hard we got to work. You mm -hmm. know, so if I'm talking to Donovan and he's like, hey, I want to be MVP. All right, mm -hmm. well, this is this is the way we got to work. You know, other players, you know, no knock, but some players are just happy to be there. Mm -hmm. You got other players, like, they want to be remembered as one of the mm -hmm. greats and stuff like that, which is a different workload. Mm -hmm. um, so my job, like, I, I don't like to put too much on a person and stuff like that because now it, it kind of divides us. Mm -hmm. Same thing, like, with my, my kids and stuff like that. Like, I didn't really start working with my daughter until she started asking And she for improved it. tremendously. Yeah, so, like, I just know the competitor that I am and I know mm -hmm. how, like, uh, like demanding I can be so mm -hmm. before I start to do that and drive a wedge between our relationship or anything like mm -hmm. that like I like to ask like what mm -hmm. is it that you want out of this yeah you know what also with when it comes to BAM also man the the growth that um that I've saw with BAM you know what I'm saying or I've seen with BAM is it's tremendous man when he first came in you know BAM was more for pick and roll right. you know dunk on you kind of guy mm -hmm. but now he added a whole new you know, repertoire to his game, which right. is tremendous. Like you have him dribbling, you know, going between, like the way he moves is very shifty. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think How, how gonna, was that process? I think people are gonna be surprised, man. Like, I mean, I don't even wanna take all the credit, you know, the Heat have done a, a great job with him. Mm -hmm. um, shit, he's a, he's a pro's pro, like he pushes himself. Like right now we're doing three a days, mm -hmm. you know, 6 a.m., 10 mm -hmm. and six again at night, you know, so, we have some goals and we have some things that we got circled that we want to go after and stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure people are going to probably see the best BAM that they've seen in a while this mm -hmm. year, you know, just because we just raised the bar in terms of things that we want to go after. And you have a few G League players also, right? Mm -hmm. what, what's the difference between, um, in your opinion, you know what I'm saying, what's the difference between a G League player and an NBA player in your opinion? Really just understanding their role, you know, understanding like and, and, and carving out a niche for themselves and mm -hmm. stuff like that. like. Everybody can't be a bucket, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Everybody, you know what I mean? Like you have to figure out like what's your thing and then you also have to control the things that you can control, you know? You know, it's crazy, you told me this when? You told me this four years ago, right? And then every time I'll come into the runs, you know, when I used to come into the runs, it's me just going crazy, right. running up and down, you know? Then you was like, let's find your role. So I started shooting. Mm -hmm. Then we'll have conversations like, now nah, let's shoot that right away or roll hard. And then it start like this next year in, I started to pick up what you wanted me to really do, which mm -hmm. helped me tremendously. Right. But if you see how my game elevated tremendously. No, for sure, bro. Which, like I've been paying attention to you when you go overseas. And I remember mm -hmm. those combos, you know, I'd be like, yo, yo, you tripping, bro. Yeah. Like, come on, like, <laughs> yeah, for real. let's move that or whatever. <laughs> but like, <laughs> once, once you locked into your role, bro, like you have a great game. Yeah. But you know, like a lot of times people, 
don't want to have a role. Like mm -hmm. people want to, they, they'll see James Harden or Steph mm -hmm. Curry and just want, I'm like, bro, like lock into a role. Everybody mm -hmm. ain't going to be that, you yeah. know, but once you learn your role and perfect that role and then grow out of that role, you know what I'm saying? So like, if I'm a shooter, mm -hmm. this is what got me here. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Now that we can add some things, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. stuff like that along the way, but like master some shit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. A lot of times right now, people are too impatient to master some shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's why you fall a little which, bit short. What you helped me with in my game is like the pick and pop. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then, because the pick and roll actually just came easy, natural right. to me. And it, that's what I wanted to work on in my game is the pick and pop, um, like stretching the floor. Right. And because a lot of bigs, they don't want to guard out there. So mm -hmm. I started like shooting. I think I shot like 40, 40% 40 this year. Oh, you know shit. what I'm saying? And... Um, you helped me tremendously on it. And I would like to thank you and give you your flowers on that, you know. But um, yeah, man, it's it's it's, it's um it's crazy, man. Even with bees, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Bees, you know, bee how bees is. He's right. aggressive. Yo, let's right. roll my, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But bees, I think bees is misunderstood. Definitely, you know, you know. But he has such a big heart. For sure, you know what I'm saying? Like, bees is one of my best friends, bro. Mm -hmm. Like it is more than just basketball with him. That's my brother. Like, love that guy to death. Like, we've been holding each other down for years and stuff like that. And, you know, the thing is, what I always got to remind him is, I'm like, bro, like, everybody don't get a chance to, to, to talk to you like I do. So, like, when you doing this or you doing that, I get it. But the thousands of people out there, like, they don't understand mm -hmm. it. So, like, we got to kind of curve our message a little bit, mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, in, 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 in terms of like how we're, you know what I mean, delivering it. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the message gets lost in the, the, the delivery. Exactly. But if you ever have a chance to sit and talk with him, like he's one of the, the most brightest people that you'll ever come mm -hmm. across. And mm -hmm. like some of the things he says, like I always tell him this all the time, like some of the things he say remind you almost of like a Jay-Z album. Mm -hmm. And I say that to say this, like you ever listen to his album and you hear it and you like, okay, and then you hear it again, you're like, damn, that's what he was talking about? Like sometimes bees will say some stuff. Let me tell you, let me tell you, in my experience with bees, how genuine it is, right? He will stop, I don't know if you remember this, he will stop the whole game, pull me to the side and be like, let's, you know what I'm saying? You you grow hard, I'm gonna get you the ball. You pop hard, I'm gonna get you the ball. Run hard, I'm gonna get you the ball. You know what I'm saying? And he will give me like different insights. I have it on video. Mm -hmm. He'll give me like different insights of what I should be doing. And I take that with me. And it's about me putting the ego to the side, mm -hmm. you know, because when it comes to like um, that ego stuff, I needed to get rid of that. Right. And as a basketball player. We, we had a combo yeah. that one night and I called you. I say, hey, bro. Come on, and then after that, yeah, after that, you know what I'm saying, yeah, money went up, I went up, yeah, bro. You like, know what I'm saying? Like I said, for me and the culture that I built, like it's, it goes much further than just like development. It's a brotherhood. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, we gotta hold each other accordingly. Like one thing that I think Bees has done a great job at, mm -hmm. and I mean, and kudos to him because I know it's not easy, but he's taking his situation. And when I get the Desmond Baines or the Jonathan Kamingas, like he pulls him to the side mm -hmm. and he's like, look, bro, like, don't be me. You know, mm -hmm. be better than me. Like, mm -hmm. watch out for this. And so for me, like, I'm big on, like, just making sure all the guys get the information, mm -hmm. whether it's good, bad, and different. I don't act like I know everything, but I do pride myself on going to get the information for you. Like, I don't know what it's like to be the number one pick in the draft, but John yeah. Wall does. And one of the best e examples of, of that is um, P.J. Tucker, mm -hmm. you know, he just spots up in the corner, shoot that three, and then when it comes to defense, he's tenacious. Yeah, like you know, he 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 he, he figured out his niche and he 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 just ran with it. You know, that's the thing, bro. Like a lot of kids, like they don't want to figure out like their niche. Like be great at something. I, I I'll keep going back to it, you know. But like master some shit, bro. Like everybody want to get to the the step backs and the, the 30 foot threes mm -hmm. and stuff like that i'm like bro like let's master something like let's work our way in and work our way back out you know like it's just really putting in your work you know the game has changed so much now you know for me when i was coming out you know i didn't have a, i didn't have my first trainer till i was shit, about to finish college mm -hmm. you know what i mean but i was a student of the game one thing, like my parents, they wouldn't let me leave the yard until they came home from work. So I would just be in the yard for hours, just mm -hmm. dribbling. Like I'll be watching my shadow, just dribbling, doing dribble moves and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So like people used to always ask me like, how you do that? And I couldn't tell them because it was just like a reaction, mm -hmm. you know? So now even the way that I train, like I try not to box players in mm -hmm. 
and and say, oh, you can only do this or do that. You know, like a lot of kids now, if you see them, they don't really have a feel for the game. You know, so for me, mm-hmm. like when I work with players, as much as we're gonna like do X, Y, and Z, I'm gonna also give you an opportunity to be creative, use mm-hmm. your imagination and work on your game, you know? Mm-hmm. Cause I learned from the players as well. Like, it's not just like, oh, what Ronnie say, says is gold. Like mm-hmm. shit, I'm taking different things that they do as mm-hmm. well and applying it, you know? So so when when Desmond Bain signed that big contract, how, how did you feel emotionally? I felt great, I texted him. His text back was Brink truck, Brink's <laughs> truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Des, Des deserved that, man. Des worked sure. hard. I remember when Dez was coming out, it was COVID year. So like I got to spend a little bit more time with him. Mm-hmm. So normally like pre-draft is like two months, two mm-hmm. and a half months. I got six months with Dez. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, we just worked. I remember day. you guys were in fast twitch, Davey, fast, mm-hmm. yeah. So we were just working, working, working. I remember teams calling and I kept telling them like, listen, Desmond Bain is the best, safest, pick of the draft mm-hmm. because teams couldn't really fly and see people then because mm-hmm. of COVID. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, bro, like he's proven in college. He has a professional, like he has a man body. Mm-hmm. He shoots the shit out of the ball. Mm-hmm. I'm like, he's the best, safest pick. You know, some teams were listening, some teams And he wasn't. plays defense. He plays defense, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Like some of the runs we was having during that time, I still got them on my phone. Like mm-hmm. they were crazy. Yeah, they you know, were. Everybody was yeah. coming through and he was holding it down. Mm-hmm. And so like I kept telling people and like people wasn't really listening. I'm like, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. He would have went a little bit higher if it wasn't for that CP3 trade, but mm-hmm. I'm going at 30 to Memphis was a great place for him. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, obviously, it's done worked out and stuff. So shoot, uh, kudos to Dez, man. And you know who improved also? Um, Book Knight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Book, like yeah. that's that's another one that's like very close to my heart, bro. Yeah. That's that's family. But um, shout out to Book Knight. Yeah, shout out to him. You know, for him, like we had a couple issues and stuff like that, trying to that write a couple wrongs and nothing. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But this year, I'm looking for him to have a breakout year mm-hmm. and stuff like that. You know. A lot of times, sometimes people don't get it, bro. It's bigger than basketball. Of course, it's political. Sometimes, some, it's political, mm-hmm. but sometimes, bro, they need some tough love and some mm-hmm. hugs, man. Of course. You know, one thing you can tell, you can testify to it. Mm-hmm. Um, you come through to my gym, like, mm-hmm. it's going to be tough love, but mm-hmm. it's going to be a lot of hugs, too, sure. bro. Because, like, sometimes, like, people need that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't know who got them. They mm-hmm. don't, you know, so many people that's pulling at them and yeah. stuff like that. So sometimes they need, like, real love, like, you know what I mean? And that love is genuine. Obviously, we all met mm-hmm. via basketball, but after that, it becomes a brotherhood. So, mm-hmm. like, we lean on each other for different shit. You like, know? even you had, um, what's the name, Bones? Bones Highland? You had mm-hmm. him in the gym. And Bones was is one of the most humble guys. But when he gets on that court, he's an animal. Like Bones he, I watched him and John Wall go at it. Like, yeah. you know, John Wall was trying to take his head off. He was trying to take John. Mm-hmm. That was something to watch man right there live yeah no nah, bones bones is a killer man bones mm-hmm. is a killer like so you co- see the way he cuffs that ball yeah yeah like, how do you do that <laughs> man listen he got all the handle he got all the, the the finishes and everything you ever want um so bones i'm looking for him to have a big year he just needs to find the right spot for him you don't you don't think la is the right spot not right now um, it could be it could be I, I don't really know if they're gonna make any more moves or mm-hmm. what they got going on but like he's a kid that needs to just have some freedom i think if he for me i think he'll be a great candidate for six man of the year you let him come off that bench and go crazy like he can get you 20 plus he night. was he was actually on his way to that when he was in denver for sure for mm-hmm. sure i mean denver gonna feel it that he left and stuff like that but uh, he just needs an opportunity where he can just be bones because he's creative as they come, you know. So, man, yeah, I, like I said, bro, like for me, bones, a couple other favorite players. Well, everybody's a favorite of mine when I get a chance to work with him. But uh, Dennis Smith, that's my Dennis brother. Smith is next yeah, level. Right there, yeah, Dennis Smith, June, bro, he's been good. You know, like, you, let me tell you, not to cut you off, man, but Dennis Smith, he really gets up in your face, like. He's such an irritant. He's a dog. He's you know a what I mean? Dog, and he'll let you know about it too. He, I remember he came. We came into training, and I think we was we won one game. It's a hi. Right, let's go again. So we go again. He just came out just different. Uh, that's the that's that real North Carolina stuff, man. Like a lot of guys from North Carolina got a different type. And of then heart. when when you look at his um his his Instagram, he's not really playing ball. What he's doing is training football. And then he comes in, so I'm guessing he does his training with you, with no cameras, and then he does his football stuff. Yeah, we do uh, we do a variety of different things and stuff, but one thing, he's a country-ass 
dude. <laughs> he's just a fucking athlete, bro. He's an athlete, dog. Like anything, bro, he's going, whether it's bowling, whether it's cars, it don't matter. So he's matter, competitive like, at he's everything. He's competitive at everything. Um, I told I, him, I told him, I think he's going to have a breakout year this year also. I think so too. I mean, his competitive nature is what, what gives him his edge. And for me, like, June is somebody that over the last couple of years and stuff like that, like, we was we was in the mud with it. Like mm -hmm. everybody looking at this June right now, you know what I mean with the, Brooklyn the, and everything. But just a year before, shit, we didn't know what was going because on. Because you know what it is, and, and this is from my experience, just watching on the outside. You know, I think like after he got let go from Dallas, mm -hmm. he kind of felt like, you know, alone. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, uh, 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 what, what, what I, am I gonna do now? I wouldn't say he felt alone, but I think mm -hmm. like the NBA, you know, kind of like turned their back for whatever reason. Like, mm -hmm. like the year before he went to Charlotte, like he was having injuries, right? Little injuries, little injuries here and there. Mm -hmm. You know, when he played in Portland, though, like if you look at his numbers when he played, he played well. Mm -hmm. You know, but like for whatever reason, they didn't bring him back. So that summer, you know, we locked in. We put a plan in place. You know, it, it wasn't an easy grind, bro. It was mm -hmm. flying different places and stuff, flying to Vegas, working out for teams and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And it was just so far out of my mind that we was having to work out for teams. I'm like, bro, this dude is 24 years old, mm -hmm. guards like a Explosive. dog, dunks everything. And I'm like, y'all ready to write him off, you know? And so we kept pushing forward, pushing forward. Like for me, like I'm big on creating, um, Brand. Situations, you mm -hmm. know, situations. And when I say situations where it's like you see the type of players that come through, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You see the runs go viral. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting you in a situation where, like, you play well, like, mm -hmm. you never know when that phone going to ring. That's know? what happened with when you put me in that situation with John Wall. Mm -hmm. So, like, you for me, I think his breakout, his breakout run was when he played against Donovan Mitchell. Mm -hmm. And he played extremely well. And then he was going back and forth to Charlotte. And Charlotte gave him a chance. Uh... Unfortunately, LaMelo, like, messed up his ankle. Mm -hmm. and the opportunity was there, and he ain't turned back, you mm -hmm. know, and he, he took full advantage of it. So. Yeah, he was dogging. I told him that this year, too. I said, yeah, you were dogging. Like, I mean, shout out to him for staying, you know, persistent, keeping his eye on the goal. I mean, keeping his eye, like, you know, on Being on mentally goal. strong. For sure, bro. It takes a lot, bro. Like, as a professional athlete, people don't really understand. And yeah. even sometimes when I post stuff, I really be wanting to go in in the comments when mm -hmm. I see people, like, write stuff because mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, you don't even know what these guys are going through. At like all. they're giving their all to be able to perform, for you to be able to see them and stuff. And y'all are just talking crazy. And like, like I'm in the grind with them every day. Like I'm seeing what they're doing. I'm seeing what it takes for them to get mm -hmm. there and prepare. Like they're people too. They got families. They got kids. They got mm -hmm. all type of shit going on, and on another type of level. So when I see people just comment, I'm like, bro, like y'all, y'all, y'all have no sense of and, like and, what it takes. And you know the crazy thing about it is like. You know, I didn't go to a, um, I didn't go to the AU system. I didn't, you know, I didn't even play basketball too much in high school. You know, and I'm 13 years in right now as a pro. You know, and you talking about the grind, man, and starting off at $800 a month. Bro, like, you know, I'm telling you, people don't really understand it. So like, even when I get some of these kids, and they'll they'll be like, man, I'm gonna just leave school and go overseas. I'm like, yo, my man's, like, it's it's a different grind, like. People are trying to feed their families. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a lot of shit that go into it. Like for me, thankfully, my first team that I went to was in Heidelberg, Germany. Mm -hmm. So, and it was a lot of military bases around. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't such a culture yeah, shock. Yeah, yeah. But it's other places like your first year out, you're going to Lithuania or mm -hmm. you're going to Serbia. Like mm -hmm. your coaches barely speak English, your mm -hmm. teammates barely speak English. And the culture is different. The culture is different. The food's different. It's cold as hell. Mm -hmm. Like. Bro, it's a lot of adjusting that goes through that. So anybody that 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 pursues a career overseas and and and, and makes it, kudos to them because it's not easy. The thing about what you said, man, and a lot of people have to understand, you know, a lot of athletes and aspiring pros, you know, you got to have, like you said earlier, you have to have a family, you have to have a team, you know, you have to have somebody that that's willing to, you know, like me and my agent, we talk over analytics, you know, we we talk over what what am I doing right, what am I doing wrong. You know certain things to do and not to do you know like you know celebrations don't celebrate too you don't know if the culture likes this you right, know right. like you know so some of these things that, that 
you, you you have to have somebody that that's there to guide you. Oh, for sure. You know, and if you ain't have no guidance, then you can't go far in this business. And that's where brotherhood comes in because because yeah. you a guy that's gonna be like like you pull me to the side. You I'm not from North Carolina, mm -hmm. but you came to me because I've been rocking with you five years. But even from the start, you you came to me like. Yo, Les, what are you doing? You right. can't do this. Right. Just go in there, play your, you have all the abilities. Go in there and just play your role. Right. And then my game went from like this to this because it's not even about my physical <laughs> capabilities or my physical abilities, it's about my mental. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? And you know another thing too, which if I had to give advice to players and stuff like that, I got a couple of different things I would say. One, be a good person. For sure. Be a good person because the, <laughs> It's different in the NBA, obviously, you know, contracts are guaranteed, but being a good person, I get you an extra game or two. Like For if sure. you haven't played that well, like coming in, greeting everybody and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So be a good person. Be consistent. You know what I mean? You gotta be consistent. Consistency is key. You know what I'm saying? Be fair. And when I say be fair, like a lot of players are jump from agents and stuff like that. And it's like, you're not being fair because mm -hmm. your numbers on the court don't even reflect the salary you're you're demanding your agent to get for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So one thing like my agent and I always had a deal. I said, listen, bro, I'm gonna do everything I need to do on the court mm -hmm. to equip you with everything you need to go get me mm -hmm. off the court. So so analytics plays uh um uh a big role in that, right? For sure. I mean obviously especially with with, with, with me being a point guard, you know, like my so, percentages matter. So if a guy if a guy um averaged five points, right? And his ad analytics, you know, is forty percent, fifty percent, and ninety percent. Is that is that um, good enough numbers to be able to get that point guard a, so, a twenty thousand dollar job? If, if a twenty thousand dollar job, I don't know about that. But in, in Europe, if you average in five points, I'm gonna assume, and those are your numbers. Your your your. your but that's his role, and his assist ratio is if, about if, if, nine. If that's what it is. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you're probably playing at a higher level. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Euro League, Euro mm -hmm. Cup, just because like on a lower level, like they expect a lot more. Than mm -hmm. Like it, it's hard for me to see a, a especially an import averaging mm -hmm. five points. Mm -hmm. That's what a local would do. You know yeah, what I mean? So yeah. it's like if I'm paying you to be here and you and I and you probably getting mm -hmm. the most money or whatever the case may mm -hmm. be, and you only giving me five, like that don't yeah. really work for me. But if it's five points on like a Euro League team and those are your numbers, like yeah, you're gonna keep getting jobs. But starting off, like I started off in Pro B um in Germany and stuff, I averaged twenty five my first year. Like mm -hmm. you gotta get to it, you know? Mm -hmm. Because they're looking, you know what I mean? Like those are uh, like career building jobs and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So the average five, unless you average five and those percentages and you got the number one team in the, in mm -hmm. the, in the, in the league and y'all win that joint, mm -hmm. all right, that team might keep you. Yeah, but yeah, if you yeah. averaging five and y'all middle of the pack, mm -hmm. I doubt you finish that year. You okay. know what I'm saying? There, you know, yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like you gotta sure. produce. Um, and another thing, like this is one of the biggest things and, and I hope everybody gets this. Mm -hmm. Whenever you go overseas, stop taking your money and just going home. Meaning like, bro, like get involved in the community, mm -hmm. like do shit, make them people love you, bro. Like one thing I told myself when I got ready to start, mm -hmm. like uh, with my training company and stuff mm -hmm. like that, I'm like, damn, Ron, you spent 13 years in Europe mm -hmm. and yeah, you made some cool money, but if you don't take advantage of them relationships, that mm -hmm. 13 years is in vain. Mm -hmm. So that's why I always reach back out. So now you will see, kids coming to me from Turkey, from mm -hmm. Germany, from mm -hmm. France and stuff like that because it's like, why did I spend 13 years there if I'm not gonna take advantage of those relationships mm -hmm. that I made, you yeah. know? So like a lot of times I'll see guys, and I even see them for you. Like you out there, you got mural, murals sure. and shit. Yeah. Like, like bro, that's got, big time. Got mural statues, all that, you know? Right, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of times <laughs> players will go, no, for sure, players will go take their money, go home, and then when their career over, be like, what am I gonna do? I'm like, bro, you just left yeah. all these people out here that you, that honestly, that you've met through those developmental years of your life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? For me, like, jokingly, I tell people, they be like, yo, where you from? I'm like, man, I'm European. Mm -hmm. And I'm joking, but I'm serious. Mm -hmm. Because from 21 to 35, which are those years where you developed the most, mm -hmm. I was in Europe. But you know, the thing is, what you say, man, is, is so right. Because let me tell you, I was having a, a tough season in the Philippines, right? And I was, my driver was, um, we were driving through, I think, like Quezon City or something like that. And I saw a baby, man, like a, a baby, no food and damn near close to the garbage, like digging out the garbage, you know? and. I said, oh, hell no, nah. you know? So I called up my manager in the Philippines right away and I was like, 
you know, man, I got to do something. You know what I'm saying? I want to I want to do something other than basketball while I'm here, you know, because, you know, I perform on the court, but if you don't have the right situation, you ain't going to win any games. So I was going through it like emotionally, you know what I'm saying? Because I want to win. I'm a winner. And I said, I called up my agent, you know what I'm saying? And I, I spoke to my manager and, you know, he said to me, yeah, man, go do that. So I said, can you help me set it up? So, man, I set it up, and next thing you know, I did one camp with the kids, and it was just a beautiful thing, man. I said, let's do another one. Right. Then it just started going. So now everybody's contacting my, my manager in the Philippines, like, hey, man, tell Lester we'll, we'll lay out the red carpet, boom, right. boom, boom. So I said, no, it's not even about that. Mm -hmm. I enjoy doing this because we came from nothing. Right, right. So I enjoy doing this. So what I did, I said, bring everybody. I'm telling you, they have like about... 3,000, 4,000 people. I have a video with like three, 4,000 people in the province behind me mm. walking. We're going to train. So I go to all the hoods with no security, you know, only the barangay. They call them the barangay chiefs. And these guys are like protecting me, of course. But like we're doing camps in there and their sons, their daughters are in there. And man, the message, I get like a thousand messages still to this day. Like yeah, a thousand you know, messages. You know why that's so important? Especially like after basketball. Mm hmm. Because once you start to want to build a brand or, mm -hmm. like, especially with social media right now, bro, like, there's no reason, like, people shouldn't have more brands or, mm -hmm. like, the strength of your brand shouldn't mm -hmm. be all right, especially if you're a professional athlete at any level. I always, like, this one thing I always tell Beasley, sometimes you got to go to where the love is. Mm -hmm. You can always go back there. Them people going to love you. For bro. sure. And whatever you got going on, them mm -hmm. people going to support For you, sure. bro. Because, like, when you were relevant as a player, mm -hmm. like you gave them love. So mm -hmm. after the fact, they gonna always remember Lester mm -hmm. Prosper, bro. Yeah. Like so, like that's why I always tell people. I'm I like, just redid another court there. You yeah, know what like, I'm like that stuff is important, bro. Yeah. Like one paying it for it. Two, like even if you didn't receive a direct blessing from that, mm -hmm. God is gonna bless you in some form or fashion. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like when yeah, you least blessed, expect, he blessed me you, already. You feel man. me? So yeah. like, I'm big on paying it for it, always helping out, bro. Like basketball, like. Basketball, when, when when we were younger and people be like, um, don't let basketball use you, use basketball, mm -hmm. like, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, basketball has took me to college for free. You know what would be, the world for you know free. What would be cool? If me, you, and on the off season, me, you, and Bam, and all those guys, you know what I'm saying? We could even get the Heat to sponsor it, or I'll get some of my people overseas to help sponsor this. And we'll take you guys to the Philippines, man, and we'll do a big, big camp over there for, for the kids. It's 150 million people plus in the Philippines. You know, I've never been to the Philippines, but one year when I played in, uh, I played in, in the Middle East in, in Qatar towards mm -hmm. the end of my career, a lot of their workers, because of the the cost of the labor, are mm -hmm. Filipino. Mm -hmm. Bro, they show me so much love. They're amazing. Every time I walk into the restaurant, it's like, Mr. Ronnie, bro, I was like, in, they I was in, love me. I was in Rome with my wife, right? This is how crazy it was. I was in Rome with my wife. I walked in to, to get like a pan, you know, and, and cafe, you know, un, un cafe, um, por favor, yeah. eh? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the guy said to me, Mr. Prosper? And I'm like, uh -huh. I was like, yo, what's up? Come da, 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 da. Yeah. So we started talking. He was like, man, I watch you play all the time. We, I love what you do with the people. Mm -hmm. He he mentioned my play last. Right. He said, I love what you do in our country. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And with all the work, I fed people, man. I fed people, do the courts. I, I gave them my time. Bro, that's important, bro. People going people It's crazy. People will bro. always remember how you made them feel. That's you the feel truth. Me? And you and you never know who's gonna be who. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. sometimes like I'll get DMs and those same kids, you know what I mean, that, that saw me as a player, now they got positions of power. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like they don't look at me as anything other than like, damn, I remember when Ronnie was playing here and he was a great player and mm -hmm. he was always cool with everybody and shit, maybe now I'm in power, I can help him. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, So you just never know who you're going to touch or who you're going to come Bro, across and stuff like this that. This stuff got so crazy that Manny Pacquiao reached out to me, dog. Really? Manny Pacquiao time. reached out to me and sent me a video. Hello, Lester, how are you doing? Da, da, da. Then flew me from Manila to Zambunga mm -hmm. to watch his, um, his, his, because he runs the MPBL, mm -hmm. you know? We call it the Manny Pacquiao Basketball League, right. but it's something else it means. And, but man, it, it's, the fans were tremendous, mm -hmm. you know? And he reached out to me, he's like, when are you coming? Let me know, da, 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 anything you need, anything. Right. And I said, no problem, thank you so much. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. 
that kind of stuff, that's man. That's a true testament to who you are as a person. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's important. So we, so I have a, you know, any message that you would like to to leave to the younger guys that are coming up to be able to, um, you know, what I mean, that that are inspired by you. I would like you to just um, give give him a little message, you know, so that um, he can. Um, well, first and foremost, always keep God first. Second of all, always stay humble. Uh, consistency is king, you know, like always do your work. Um, always pay it forward, always be a good person. I can't I can't emphasize that enough about being a good person um, and, and, and really just be a student of the game, man. Really, like if you really love this game, like this game will take care of you. Mm -hmm. Like I'm 41 years old and the game is constantly just taking care of me mm -hmm. through different ways now, you know. Sure. I've just been able to turn different things into brands. Shout out to Weedem Ones. Yeah. Um, so, like, always just be a good person, bro. You just never know what that's going to take you and do. You know, like, a lot of people that come through and whether they work with me or they intern with me, they go off and get good jobs in different places and stuff like that, man. So just continue to push it forward, pay it forward, keep God first, stay consistent with your work, man, and, and just continue to build. So last but not least... What is We Them Ones? Man, We Them Ones is a company that Michael Beasley and myself own. Um, and it's really, it was, it was, it was, I'll give you the, the short story of how it became. Um, Mike can probably tell it better than I can. Um, it's just something that he had, he had, he was going through. It's more so like a, a affirmation. You know what I mean? When you feel like you need that extra push to get over a hump or mm -hmm. that reminder and it goes far, you know. So it reminds you that you are, you are good. Yeah, like we the ones, you know, like, you know, when I was first talking with Mike about it, you know, he had just got to the heat, you know, he was with Braun and stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of pressure coming mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And how it was re reborn or ignited or whatever. We mm -hmm. was in the gym one day and he was bullshitting. Him and Iman Shumper and he mm -hmm. was bullshitting. And I just kept pushing him and kept pushing him to the point he snapped and he just started screaming, we them ones. He was just going crazy. Yeah. He was going everything. Like, it was more so he was mad at me, mm -hmm. but it was coming out in the form of like, we the ones. So we the ones, like, it screams confidence. Confidence, it screams a, affirmation. Affirmation. Un unity, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, we're together. Like, bro, you can be in, in, in a corporate setting, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, and fucking get a, a promotion mm -hmm. and you can scream, we the ones. Yeah. You can get an A on a test. Scream, we the ones. Yeah. It's just a reminder of who you are who you and are. that you belong. You know what I mean? Anything you need to get over the hump and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. like I said, it's, it's really been like... Anything you put your mind to, you can do it. Correct. You know, it's really been like a staple of the culture that we've built here in Miami and stuff like that in that gym because, you know, athletics, even the look of it, it was like grungy. Mm -hmm. Like, we ended, we really on some, like, almost mm -hmm. New York boxer gym For type sure. of stuff but it's basketball. For sure. You know, we're going to come in here. We're going to get this work in. Mm -hmm. Light wasn't very well lit, but it's like it was a dungeon, bro, and mm -hmm. we, we got a lot of good work out of there. A lot of good players came through there and stuff like that. So shout out to Athletics. Shout out to Erding Cambo. Sure. Appreciate you and stuff like that. But, yeah, yeah we the ones, man. Man, I, app I appreciate you for coming all the way up here, man, driving 30 hours. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I appreciate you for coming up here, man. This is this is a blessing. Man, thank you for allowing and me. And whatever share, you need, man. man, I support you on it too. And I, I, I thank it, you for supporting me and being a real, real guy, no, real stand-up guy. No, for sure, bro. Thank you thank for you. allowing me to share. And you know, anytime you need me to come through, dog, you know. I'm a, I'm That's a, a lie. I'm, 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 you know. I'm, a, I'm a gripe about it, but no, like I, you did have a driver for me and everything like that, man. Yeah, so you I did it well, you. man. I, had I appreciate you ready. that. I had you bro. laced up. I, I had you ready that, for yeah. real. Yeah, man. But nah, man. Thank you, fam. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah.